Hi everyone, it's Balint here and welcome to my beginner tutorial series on the SPAT object library for MaxMSP made by Aircom. In this very first episode we will briefly talk about what SPAT is, have a general overview on how to access info about the library and also lay down some basic concepts. If you don't know what SPAT is, feel free to check it out on forumnet.ircom.fr. In a nutshell, it is a vast library of control rate and audio rate objects designed for multi-channel spatialization. If you want to work with more than two output channels and you want to dive into immersive 3D audio, into designing surround soundscapes, composing with spatialization techniques such as higher order ambisonics, binaural or wavefield synthesis, and several others, all in the friendly environment what Max represents, SPAT is probably the most professional tool you can choose. In this tutorial series, I will assume that you have already downloaded and installed SPAT, and also that you are familiar with the basics of working in MaxMSP, including some knowledge about the most commonly used objects. Don't worry, you don't have to know too much, and I will also explain everything on the way. So to start exploring the SPAT world, you can have a look around in the SPAT5 overview. You can find this either in the Extras menu or located via Max's search sidebar, but since it is a very large patch with literally hundreds of links, it always takes a couple of seconds to load, and since this patch is a very very good origin point for you to discover which objects you might need for a certain task, you will find yourself opening it all the time, especially at the beginning. Therefore, I think it's the best to just instantiate it as an abstraction with typing spat5.overview.maxpat to an empty object box, so you only have to wait for it once and then later on you can go back to it with just double clicking the object in your patch without having to wait again. In this overview window you can find all the existing objects in the spat library neatly organized into several categories. If you ever have questions about a specific object, you can just click once on the button-shaped links, which will open up the corresponding help patcher. Of course, you can always look these up in the usual way by right-clicking the freshly created object in your patch and choosing the topmost menu option. However, the overview window will probably serve you well in situations when you're wondering, oh, I want to do this and that, what if there is a dedicated spat object for this somewhere? With opening the overview, you will quickly find out if there is one, and trust me, you will be surprised how often you will find something. Additionally, in this overview window, you can also find a tutos tab with some very important tutorials shipped with SPAD, also a home tab with links to the documentation, a gigantic list of all the externals in alphabetic order, and some other very useful links which might help you extending your workflow. Ok, so before we start to build our first multi-channel system with SPAT, let's lay down a few things. Imagine your audio chain as something like a vending machine, where at the top you throw in your sound files or microphone signal, the system renders the 3D image for you and spits out the audio signals for your speakers at the bottom. But to do this properly, it needs to know where do you want to put your sound sources in the three-dimensional space, and where are your speakers in the room, you're actually listening to the result. It can only provide you with good results if you let it know exactly where are your sources and speakers, and this is especially crucial for the latter. There is a whole world of difference between the same speaker system in the same room, with sloppy location info, with speaker angles and gains left totally unattended, or with highly accurate location info and positioning, down to the centimeters of precision, with carefully calibrated speaker angles, gains and delays. If you don't move your speakers in the studio, you only have to do this once and trust me, you will appreciate the result. The difference is that in a badly or uncalibrated system, the 3D image falls apart, giving you jagged, unpredictable panning transitions, and generally a feeling that you are listening to a bunch of mono speakers. However, in a professionally tuned and calibrated system, you cannot really hear the speakers individually even though you can clearly see them around you, which affects your listening a lot, by the way. So don't blame SPAT or any other tool you use for bad calibration, no software can measure and move around your speakers instead of you. 
In a future tutorial, we will look into how some dedicated tools in SPED can help you with calibrating the gains and delays of your speakers and how to use that to tune your system. So what is the practical side of working with sources and speakers? It's that lots of SPED objects will need you to provide them either the location of your sources or the location of your speakers or both. As you work more and more with SPAT, you will find yourself juggling with these lists of positions more and more often, especially when you will start to realize your own algorithmic ways to generate positions or movements. For a comprehensive overview about how many ways you can address positions of your sources and speakers in SPAT, take a look at the SPAT5 positions max help. As you can see here, there are tons of ways to position or move sounds, and trust me, this flexibility will come very handy in your future, more advanced art projects with SPAT. For now, we will focus on the two most commonly used methods to express positions in SPAT, the AED and the XYZ methods. AED stands for Azimuth Elevation Distance, where Azimuth is the rotation in Euler angles on the horizontal plane, Elevation is the rotation on the vertical plane and distance is, well, distance in meters. XYZ refers to our commonly used Cartesian coordinate system, where the x-axis is left to right, the y-axis is back to front, and the z-axis is bottom to top, and the numbers are representing meters. One more important thing to mention before we start patching, is that since version 5, SPAT uses the popular OSC protocol for communication, which I won't cover here, you can look it up if you are not familiar with it yet. Bottom line is that every object property is being set through a hierarchical address with a starting forward slash and additional slashes without spaces between the words, then a space, and one or more values in a list depending on the property. Don't worry, you will get used to it in minutes, and you will be very grateful later for the patching and performance benefits it brings. Okay, this wraps up our first tutorial. See you in the next one where we will build our first simple system with SPAT and meet with some very handy objects which can become our longtime friends throughout our journey in SPAT. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers!